Okay, so what are we doing? We're going to flip a coin on this 70 or 80 bucks for this thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> this Philco refrigerator. So, 19, what are you, 50? I think 50, yeah. Again, no. <laughs> <laughs> you flip coins for everything, huh? I, I just don't know. I just don't know the price, you know? If you, uh, if it's good price, I'll buy all three from you. You gotta think, you gotta think, you gotta think the table. Oh, the gas? The gas, yeah, the gas. Yeah. He wants a good price. He wants no, no, no. How much do you asking for? And then I make you offer. I don't want to do that. This, the, dude, this is what America's come down to. We have to, <laughs> <laughs> we have to flip a coin to figure out what the, what people pay for stuff now. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, this is. So you lucky or I lucky? Third, third world country <laughs> style. <laughs> you said head, heads is what? Head is 70. Tail is uh, 80. 80. Yeah. Go ahead. Looks like tails. You, you're lucky. 80 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> I'm lucky. Because you should stop it. <laughs> Did I get to keep the quarter too? <laughs> no. <laughs> Pick it up and slide it over, Steve. Uh, what am I going to do by myself? God. Tell me the history of Harvey's TV. Okay, in 19... I, I've owned it since 1980. Prior to that, it was owned by uh, a man named Abe Indector, who merged with... He was radio analysis, and he merged with Harvey's TV. Okay. Back in the 60s, I guess. Late 60s, early 70s. Okay. And he put it together and it became Harvey's TV. And I worked for him for two years. And then they were, uh, no, actually I worked for him from 76, four years. And then they were, they were going to retire. They were older people, a uh, couple. And they retired and they sold the business to a doctor. And the doctor had it for one year and lost a lot of money. So he decided to sell the business. Plus, he was getting divorced. Okay, so what's the what's the oldest documented? Oh, I don't know. There's some places in in, in downtown LA that have been around for a hundred years. I mean, what's the oldest documented footprint of Harvey's TV going back? When did it? I would say probably from seven, like I said, late sixties, early seventies, seventy two, seventy something like that. Okay. Um, but, uh, like I said, I've been the owner since 80. Okay. I see there's a lot of 8.5 by 11 glossies up there that are signed. All, since I, Those are all my customers. When I took over the business, I inherited a lot of the movie star customers, and I kept them. All the, all the, the pictures that you see were autographed for us. To either to me or to the company. Like they were customers. Yes, yeah, they're all customers. Okay. So when did when did the business peak? I would say probably peaked in two thousand. We were real busy during the earthquake in ninety four, and it carried us probably to two thousand four, two thousand six, something like that. Really, what was the what was the earthquakes involvement with? Well, at that time, they didn't have flat panel TVs, so they had regular TVs. Right. A lot of them fell, and it cracked the chassis, cracked the cabinets, and the insurance would pay the people to get them fixed. Really? Unless they were totally broke the picture tube or something, they couldn't fix them, then they would replace them. So in 94, we were busy. The 94 Northridge, Northridge quake. quake. Yeah. Correct. Interesting. Um, tube sets. Before my time. Before your time. Well, yeah, I just, when I started going to school, they had already had solid state devices, uh, transistors. Right. And that's what I learned in school. But but as far as customers bringing tube sets in for repair, when? Again, that was, that stopped, I would say that stopped in, actually bringing them in for repairs would be 60s, middle 60s. Because by the end of the 60s, they already had solid-state devices, which had half tubes and half transistors. Well, 
tube tube sets went clear up into the mid seventies to a point. Well, not not in everyday use, because uh, I'm trying to think. The last tube jo uh, tube set I had was a hybrid, and that was I was in Sears, so that was yeah, that was in seventy. Graduate seventy-two. So you weren't you, you didn't have customers bringing tube sets in for repair up in up into the or late eighties? No. Not at all. It was all solid state by then. most of the majority was solid state. Then they went to circuit boards modules that you would change in the home. Right. But uh, I mean the tube sets were still out there but it was like very rare that you came across a tube type set. Okay. When when did you see things start to diminish? What when this high definition started? When they changed the way to produce the signal, so that means they had to change the way the TVs are made. So you, the digital crossover when right. we went from from analog to digital. That's when things really started, started to right. Because again, you had a CRT set that used to last you under normal use would last you twenty a good twenty years. You can, under limit, you know. Uh, be, not every day, it would last you 30 years. That picture tube lasts forever, so you would fix the chassis and keep it going, plus it was a piece of furniture. People loved the furniture. When they came out with the digital TVs or the high-def TVs, all that changed. Now you had no more cabinets. Now you had no more CRTs. You could hang them on the wall, but you didn't have any reliability. Right. What are, what's, the, what's the general lifespan you're seeing out of these well, new... The first generation that came out those plasmas that we're selling for fifteen or twenty-five thousand dollars, you might get anywhere from four to eight years out of it if you're lucky before it broke. Okay. Next generation that came out after that, two to four years. The stuff today, you're lucky it lasts you a year. Two years if you just lucky. gets outside the warranty. Yeah. So, but the mentality of today's society of the younger generation, throw it away and buy another one. Yeah. I would. I was curious what you kind of thought of the disposable disposable culture today. That's just the way it is. But I mean, it's good for the for the the manufacturers to sell new products. It killed the service industry. Right. And people seem to don't like I said. The older generation bought something and they knew the value and they kept it for a long time. And if it broke, they fix it and it'll last you another you know long length of time before it broke. But today's society, they grew up in a throwaway. Just throw it away. Buy another one. And that killed our industry, any service industry. So is this end of the line for Harvey's TV? And it looks like it might be. Uh, like I said, I'm moving my number. I'm taking my number. I'm moving to my house. I still have, a, I have myself 30,000 customers in my database from, from all the years that I've been here. Uh -huh. And if I can generate a few service calls to keep me going, I'll keep doing it. If it doesn't, well... Then it'll be the end of Harvey's. So, what's the what's the repairability of these new sets? What are you guys? There's quite a few of them out there with the backs off of them on the bench. Yeah, well, it probably it comes down to price. Again, the first and second generation, if you have to replace one of the boards, they're expensive. The newer stuff, the boards aren't as expensive, but also the overall TV isn't either. So most of the service is going to be nowadays is the hookups, hooking up the new equipment, you know, and, and uh, programming. That's all that's left as far as servicing. So you've been kind of struggling for how many years? With for the la really, for probably the last five years. When was the, the DTV transition? Was uh, 2000 and well, they started in 2001, I think. And then it really got more in 2002 on. I'm trying to remember the actual switchover date, and I want to say it was 2008 or something because they postponed it once. Well, they had a big thing about the tuners from 2000, after 2008, all TVs being manufactured had the high, the high def tuner in it. Right. Prior to that, they didn't. Only the, the higher end sets had it. But your average sets didn't have the high def tuner. Do you see any CRT TVs come through the door for repair anymore? 
Is it a big 35-inch like... came? It came uh, about a month ago, but then you couldn't get the board. That's the way, not just me, every, most of my colleagues are in the same position as I am. It's just some of them happen to own the building that they're in so they can stick it out a little longer. Other ones, like me, that don't own the building, we're either going to try to work out of our house or try to learn a new trade. But the problem is when you're 58 years old, nobody wants to teach you a new trade. You know, nobody wants to hire you. Mm -hmm. How about the stereos and... The same. In fact, the stereos are getting more like the computers, you know, you, if it's if it's a problem internally and it's on the main board, just throw it away, get another one. They're selling them so cheap. You're not getting any vintage no, stuff. I in. was getting stuff to work on here, while, you know, while I was here. People were coming from Ventura, from Pasadena. They come all over bringing their older type stereos. And those are the ones I remember I worked on when I was starting. But I hadn't, I hadn't seen those for quite a while and then when I got on Yelp, uh, more and more people are looking for somebody that works on that vintage stereo stuff. Yeah, there's a real market with mm -hmm. that vintage audiophile crowd. Right. They can be tough to please, though, as I'm <laughs> yeah. sure you've... Uh -huh. So I always told them, I mean, I, I have experience, some experience. I can do so, only so much, but if you want to bring it down, I'll take a look at it. If not, you know, I can't refer to anybody. I don't know anybody else. Because all the technicians I knew that used to work on them, they're all gone, passed away. Right. Capacitors blown up, seem they're kind of puffy. Oh yeah. So there's a number of them, plus we checked the circuit and checked all the other capacitors. So I was able to pull the board from the house, fix this, and then go back and put it in. So you're going to recap it? Yes. Look at they're all bulging up. Yeah. That's very common on Samsungs, and a lot of them, but mostly Samsung is the biggest. This is an LG. So they put it on YouTube and everybody thinks that that fixes all the problems, but sometimes you have components that go bad also. Right, what other stuff goes bad? The diodes? Yeah, the diodes or some of these surface mount regulators go bad. But now when everybody gets a power supply problem, oh, it's the caps, especially if people are on the internet. I know I have bad capacitors, how much does it cost to fix?